He said at the time, this could never happen. This was not supposed to happen. What went wrong? So there were two major problems at Chernobyl. One was a flawed reactor design, which thankfully doesn't exist anywhere else in the world today. And the second was a real disregard for the safety around the nuclear um, plant. And there was a safety test that was planned to go ahead, which really shouldn't have gone ahead. Mm. And it was this disregard for safety combined with that bad reactor design that really led to the accident. What well, did you, because um, I've read a number of articles. I was absolutely entranced by it. It's an extraordinary series. Um, and I read a number of articles from people saying, wow, what's extraordinary is that this is really accurate. How did you feel? It's so accurate that when I first started watching the show, I thought it was filmed on site. So I've, I've been to the nuclear reactor at Chernobyl and I thought this looks identical to inside. Um, and then it turns out it wasn't filmed there at all. It was filmed at a, a nearby power station. But it's sister plant, wasn't exactly. it? Exactly, yeah. yeah. Um, so the story has been really highly accurate. They've gone to a lot of detail um, and effort to research things from the costumes of the time um, down to the exact um, uh, things that went wrong in the accident. It's all really, really very accurate. Did they miss anything out? Was there anything in the story you thought, hmm? Well, there were some things that were slightly anachronous, perhaps out of place. There was a, a helicopter crash that happened mm. in the first episode and it, it looked like it happened because it flew into a cloud of radiation. But in actual fact, that happened several weeks later when a helicopter, its turbine blades uh, clipped a crane and then, and then crashed. The crash did happen, but it happened at a different slightly time. So there are some things, obviously, I think, in telling of the drama, they've had to move around a little bit for effect. But generally speaking, the sequence of the events that happened inside the nuclear reactor is really accurate. What was extraordinary was the denial. Um, denial on the night, it hasn't happened, it's just a fire, and the subsequent denial after that. I think there was um, an element of surprise that anything like this could have happened. Um, it's just not supposed to happen in a mm. nuclear reactor. And as I said, it was the flawed reactor design. Mm. Well, they tried to cover it up, though, didn't they? Well, they, they did. I, and I think perhaps that's telling of the Soviet government at the time. Um, they didn't want to show weakness, particularly in the heightened mm. era of the Cold War. Well, Mikhail Gorbachev said that that was the, probably the single greatest factor for, for the for breakup of the Soviet Union. Yes, yeah, I'd say so. And it, it, it's still, the Soviets, still, the Russians still have 31 as their, as their number. We mentioned 4,000 in that VT, but there are other estimates that say up to 90,000 people could have died. That's right. I think the issue is it's very difficult to um, understand what happens to the human body when we have very low doses of radiation. So very high doses of radiation, we know that that causes acute radiation sickness and those poor firefighters and control workers, they, they died um, as a result of that. But lower doses are difficult to track. Um, so, for example, over the course of your lifetime, you might be exposed to many different factors that give rise to cancer, so drinking too much wine, eating red meat, what, whatever's in the news at the moment. Um, so it's very difficult to really follow um, those people who had been exposed to radiation all the way through to mm. see what cancers they got. And there's radiation in many unexpected things, like bananas. Yes, that's right. I, I brought a banana in with me this morning, this very battered, bruised banana. Um, it contains a, um, a radioactive isotope of potassium, potassium-40. And so we, we eat this every day. Um, if you have a banana for and your breakfast... And that's not dangerous. No, it's, it's very it's good not. for you. So, so the human body has adapted itself to um, repair the damage caused by very small amounts of radiation. So we have DNA repair mechanisms, which mean that we can eat a banana or we can have a, a chest X-ray. We can even fly on a transatlantic flight where we have less shielding from the Earth's atmosphere to protect us from the natural radiation from the sun. Mm -hmm. Our body has adapted to be able to deal with those small amounts of radiation. So I think one thing that people may be quite afraid of from watching this show is that, that nuclear power is very dangerous. And I think what I want to say is that we can deal with small amounts of radioactivity. It's just when things go really badly wrong, those very large amounts of radioactivity that we start well, to Well, you've get got a guy counter there, haven't you? I do, I do. Would you like me to demonstrate the radioactivity of the banana? So I'm just going to switch <laughs> this This is on. all bananas. It makes a loud sound. <laughs> and it's going to start clicking in a second when it switches on. It looks like a 1980s mobile phone. Yeah, it does. <laughs> it's very high tech. Um, OK, so it's clicking a little bit now. Does that mean there's radiation in the studio? So there's radiation all around us naturally all the time. It's coming from the sun, it's coming from the rocks beneath our feet. Okay. So the, the radiation clicking here you can hear is just probably particles from the sun right. hitting the Geiger counter. And so the radioactivity in the beside the banana is, is so small, it's exactly the same as, as the background. Well, it's a bit more though, slightly. Probably just kind of differences <sighs> in the background. 
Okay. There's nothing there. But you have brought something in that is definitely radioactive. I have, and I'm going to put oh, my, look, my gloves... going off. I'm going to put my gloves on to get this out, because uh, just like if you clean your oven at home, you want to wear gloves, you don't want to get the chemicals on your skin. Well, just latex gloves are, are good yes. enough. Yes. So, so this, this rock I'm going to pull out now is... Um, it's called pitch blend. It's the... Wrapped in lead. Natural, yes. It's the natural <laughs> ore from which we make uranium fuel. It's perfectly safe. It's perfectly safe. Okay. Yeah, it is perfectly safe, but you told us not to touch it before the show. <laughs> yes, you want to wash your hands. You don't want to eat the radioactive particles. No. So, so if these particles get inside your tummy, yeah. they start to radioactively decay and they'll hurt the tissues inside your tummy. Right. So that's why I'm wearing my gloves, because I don't want okay. to eat it. Yeah. So th there's a similar hazard to like cleaning your oven. You want to protect yourself, right. essentially. OK, so I'm going to bring this next to the Geiger counter. You can already hear it's kind of picked Yeah, yeah. OK. What's so, reading? Wow! I picked this up, or rather my husband did, he'll kill me if I say this. My husband picked this up just from a path um, on a holiday that we had in Cornwall. So what? Right. These, wow. this rock occurs naturally. But we don't know when we're UK. picking these things up. We think, oh, I might save that. It's got a nice bit of green in it. Yeah, it's very pretty. It's not going to cause you any harm whatsoever. So if you were to touch it, it's not... I mean, it, that, just because it makes that noise, it doesn't mean that it's bad. No, absolutely not. I will say, there you go. You don't have to go yeah. all the way to Chernobyl to build... Well, <laughs> to build you were given thing. one of these, weren't you, as you walked uh, around? They, they give you a... a, a measurement for the dose of, of uh, radiation that you get and at the end you get your certificate saying you've been to Chernobyl with the uh, dose which they said that's equivalent to being on a flight for one hour and obviously oh. it's three and a bit hours flying time to Kiev so you're going to get more radiation actually getting there than you are from so the So what was it itself. like? What did you do? Absolutely fascinating. The first thing they do is tell you this is not a theme park. It's not an amusement park. This is the site of a nuclear disaster and you have to obey all the rules. For example, don't um, eat or drink outside, don't sit down, don't pick anything up because it could be radioactive. This is the footage um, that you And uh, it's, uh, yeah, that, that you can see the reactor there in the uh, background with the cover. This is called the, the new safe containment that they put over it. Just hundreds and hundreds of tons of uh, steel and concrete. Loads of souvenirs on sale. Um, and it was queuing up there and uh, this American said, I'll have a, a, a an I love chip. Chernobyl glowing fridge magnet and a hot dog, please. So there we are. Um, did but... it strike you, bearing in mind that so many people lost their lives, did it strike you as being a little peculiar? Well, it is very, very important that this doesn't become voyeuristic. Yeah. Um, mm. I mean, it is true, you have to say that um, tragedy plus time equals tourism, and that's been played out in many, many places. And it is partly, for a lot of people, entertainment, but it's also very, very enlightening. Um, they are keen to tell you what happened about the, not just the incompetence of design and operation that led to the tragedy, but the immense heroism that followed it, um, where you had so-called bio-robots. That's because robots didn't work, so they sent men in their thousands in to clear the, uh, uh, the, the debris from the explosion. And by the end of it, you are absolutely um, enthralled by this story. And of course, all the other dimensions, you mentioned the Soviet Union, you know, the background at which they would not ask for help from the West because they didn't want to admit they got things so wrong. And the way you had this monolithic authoritarian regime, which began to crumble mm. when scientists mm. started saying, actually, we got this wrong, everybody. Was it eerie? It was very eerie, particularly in the town of um, um, Pripyat, which is the model city that they built to accommodate all these scientists bullshit brought in from across the USSR. And you can see there, it just looks like... Um, well, I, I come from Crawley, um, similar era, <laughs> and it looks sure like Crawley would like to be uh, if you associated with the if, town that was next to a nuclear explosion. Well, uh, and th you can just uh, see how people were given two hours' notice. They were told thousands, tens of thousands of people, you're leaving town in two hours. They were yeah. told it was just going to be temporary, but of course, nobody ever returned. Absolutely gripping, very professionally run, strong emphasis on safety from. Um, Radiation, yeah. and uh, but uh, actually very little health and, expensive, and safety inside. Expensive uh, it cost me 125 pounds, um, uh, but uh, remarkable value, I'd yeah. say, for what you get out of it. Um, I uh, flights out, out there, I paid 300 because I booked very late, but you can get there for about 100, 150 return. And once you're in. 
beautiful city of Kiev. Mm -hmm. Everything's really cheap. It's quite a long tour as well, isn't it? Oh, it is an extraordinary day out. But I believe, Claire, you've actually been there for two days. I, I, I did a two-day tour with my research oh. team, and we actually stayed overnight in a hotel inside the town of Chernobyl, not the city of Pripyat, but the town of Chernobyl. And they have a hotel there because there are thousands of workers still working to yeah. clean up the reactor, and they have to have somewhere to stay. There was a very strict curfew. We had to be in bed by 10 o'clock. Oh, right. If you got caught outside, then it was to Ukrainian jail with you. No! Um, <laughs> just because of the, the hazards associated yeah, with yeah. wandering off, really. Mm. Um, Fair enough, like you said. It's, 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 could it happen again? It's a really good question. Um, I think the best thing to say is that with any technology, um, there's always a risk of something going wrong. People get in their cars every day and they know that there might be an accident. Um, we can never say never, but what we can say is that the reactor design at Chernobyl has never been built again. Those ones that still exist, the RBMK reactors, have been retrofitted to um, remove the same issues that were there. Um, there. There may always be a problem with people. We're, we're not infallible. You know, people may cut corners, but so long as um, safety is, is kept as a top priority, Priority, and we use the right reactor designs, nuclear energy is really safe and, and we need it as part of our energy mix.